going on everybody? How is everybody doing today? In this video, we are going to be reacting to Jonathan Wasserman's of Bleacher Report. Way too early 2022 NBA mock draft. Welcome to the Chet Holmgren hype machine. Yes, so I'm doing this video today because I think actually today you'll be seeing or very soon on my main channel, my way too early 2022 NBA mock draft because I thought it would just be a fun thing to do. If you guys do enjoy these videos, drop a thumbs up. I would really appreciate it. And let me know down below what you think. And I'll leave a link to the article in the description below. So I won't waste any of our time. I'm guessing it's going to be a first time. There's only 12 slides here as you can see. And they're using FanDuel's 2022 championship odds to create a mock draft order. I did mine with DraftKings. It's weird to see that the Rockets were the lowest. When I did mine, I think the Thunder were the lowest. Where there was a bunch of teams with like plus 50,000 odds. And I and it went from alphabetical. So it was like the Thunder, the Pistons, the, geez, the Magic. I think the Rockets might have been in there. Maybe the Spurs. I forget. So, yeah, number one consensus, Chad Holmgren. And, yeah, I think that's pretty much the consensus pick right now. You watch his U19 stuff. Uh, yeah, it was in early July. He was just incredible ball on his hands he's seven foot he is a little bit skinny but he puts on a little bit of weight he will be very good and i wouldn't say he's like a guy like i don't know like chris Stops was coming out of uh geez lithuania where it's like uh this guy is gonna i don't know he's a twig or you look at bull bull and you kind of you get a little squeamish every time he jumps in the air because you don't know like if his legs are gonna snap in half so i don't know yeah like he's a good passer he's a good shooter he's got a high basketball iq and he could just kind of finish inside he's got a little bit of a post game to him and yeah like he can dribble the ball the open floor he's very good and people are gonna look at him like really this guy's good but yeah he really is he could be the number one overall pick in the 2021 excuse me two nba draft we'll see he's gonna be playing at gonzaga this year so he's gonna be in plenty of televised games that gonzaga team is gonna be really good him and drew timmy in the front court yeah it's gonna be nasty over there for the bulldogs or they the walk okay, another they're the bulldogs but yeah home grade number one that's who i had and then at two paul banchero i believe i had bench no i think i had Jaden hardy too in mine but yeah he's got banchero going to the pistons i guess could be a potential replacement for jeremy grant i guess because he fits the cade stewart bay hayes timeline a lot more obviously but yeah he's gonna be playing at duke which is Sefsky's final year and he i think might be espn's like number one guy going into the college season in these past chat home grind he's gonna be really good as well he's gonna be playing with aj griffin there and a little bit um and somebody else that's a top 100 like top 30 guy honestly i forget his name um it's just off the top of my head but or is it to reclaim it? No, that's the next year. I don't know. But either way, Benchero is stunned inside. He'll be very good uh, for Duke this year. And he'll play some good talent in the ECC. And he is um, a 6'10", 250, as you can see. He's got that power and skill versatility. Three, we got the OKC Thunder taking Jaden Hardy. Yeah, so he's going to be, I think, compared to a lot um, of Jalen Green just because G League, two, three-level score, good athleticism, good with the ball in his hands. Uh, not as athletic as Jalen Green, and I would say not as good as a prospect as Jalen Green. But Hardy should be very good in the G League this year playing with i believe dyson daniels um will also be there joining him and he yeah he should be able to showcase his ability over there and i i think he's gonna be a top five pick i pencil it in teams are gonna look at anthony edwards from two years ago they're gonna look at jalen green these guys that could score at all three levels and be potential really good shooters in the league as well as plus side defenders yeah they're going to be valuable, and I think he'll go in the top five, uh, 100%, possibly top three, possibly number one, who knows, um, in the 2021 NBA draft, or excuse me, 2022, I did that again. Next up at four, we have Yannatic Noza, uh, Sosa, Nosa, I, I got to figure out how to pronounce his name, but yeah, he is the guy that played in the Spanish League, yes, the Spanish ACB. Um, I don't know if he played in that year or whatever week he was in. He joined like Rubio and Luca as the only 16 year olds to ever score 10 points in a game. 16 in one of the like best Euro international uh, leagues out there. And he joined, yeah, Rubio and Luca Doncic, who are just legends in the international scene. So, and he knows that he, he can do it all. He's really a sub defender. It's really what he's going to be um, projected as. Uh, maybe he would be a great fit with Orlando due to them having Jonathan Isaac but if you can project as a five and you would have him and Isaac in the front court that's pretty good because he'll be kind of going up against like Jalen Duran is also another kind of pick it's a good draft for big men I'll tell you that um and yeah Nana Noza Zosa I feel like it's Zosa and that is definitely silent 2003 god I'm like four years older than some of these players oh I'm getting old next up we have Cleveland speaking of Jalen Duran taking uh or Cleveland yeah taking Duran somebody that reclassified that was supposed to be in the 2023 class uh but he is I believe going to Memphis like he just committed to Memphis I could be wrong it says he's undecided here 
but he could play in Memphis, and that's where like he might play with his buddy, I believe, Imani Bates there. And yeah, he's a bruiser inside. I just got him in my Magic Rebuild. I don't know if you guys are seeing that by now. Maybe not. Uh, maybe not. But yeah, Dur uh, Durant's going to be a bruiser inside. We'll see if he ever develops an outside shot that can kind of score. But yeah, he is just kind of that bruiser inside. He's going to be compared to like Kung Capella and some of those guys. But if you're getting a Kung Capella at five, it's pretty good value. And then him and Mobley in the future, it's very nice. Next up six, we have AJ Griffin. I mentioned him before playing with Paul Banchero. Love him on the Kings. I don't know if I mocked that or did I have them taking Caleb Houston, but I had them taking a wing. And man, I would love to see AJ Griffin there because this guy, great ball handler, is predicted to be a stud perimeter defender in this league, can shoot, can shot create, can play make it. Oh man, you have Fox, Halliburton, AJ Griffin, or just kind of Mitchell and Fox and Griffin. Oh man, that's so good. That's so good. Sacramento needs to get AJ Griffin. I'm hoping he plays well at Duke this year. Uh, seven, we have Jabari Smith out of Auburn uh, going here. Like I said, it's the draft for the big man. And he, I think I mocked this as well. Did I have him or Patrick Baldwin? I forgot. And we haven't even met Patrick Baldwin yet. But yeah, he is Jabari Smith going seven to the Minnesota Timberwolves. It's, yeah, perfect fit next to Cat. It's what they need. Hopefully by now Cat doesn't request a trade into the seventh pick in the draft. But I could just, yeah, that would be an amazing fit. Him or Patrick Baldwin to Minnesota at seven. Next up we have eight. Caleb Houston. Okay, going in front of Patrick Baldwin at Michigan. All right. Um, there's also some other wings like Kendall Brown on the board as well. And we'll get to the Michigan State guy in a little bit. Um, Again, thinking he'll be in this mock. We'll see. But yeah, Caleb Houston going to Michigan. He's going to be very, playing in a very good conference in the Big Ten. It's going to be loaded once again this year with Purdue, with Michigan, with Illinois, with like even like Maryland will be respectable still in Michigan State and guys from or teams from last year, obviously. So yeah, Caleb Houston, it's a good wing draft. Honestly, like point guard have, has been the loaded position in the last couple drafts. This draft, it's probably not the best. Like, yeah, you have G. Montero, J.D. Davison, but you can notice we haven't had a point guard. I'm sure there's going to be someone that's going to skyrocket throughout the year. Maybe Jaden Ivey could project as a one. But yeah, uh, now we have Patrick Baldwin. Uh, wow, just imagine Patrick Baldwin and Patrick Williams together. That would be fun. Chicago's a weird team if he ended up on them just because, like, with DeRozan, with Pat Will, I don't really know if that would work out. But he could be that prototypical, like, space the floor, shot create, defend, possibly pass, like playmaking stretch four that teams could really want one day. And that could be Patrick Baldwin. He'll be very valuable in the 2022 draft. And Matthew Cleveland, the small forward out of Florida State. He will be kind of a um, a top guy going into the draft next year. But yeah, just another Florida State guy with Scotty Barnes, with Vassell, with Patrick Williams that went high. Matthew Cleveland could be the next guy up. So 11 through 20, uh, we have Kennedy Chandler. Yeah, first point guard drafted. Um, should have mentioned him. We got Damien Collins. Peyton Watson falling to 13. Okay. Uh, we have Jaden Ivey, 14. I think he'll be a lottery pick unless he just sucks this year for the um, Toronto Raptors. Gene Montero, the first overtime player that could be drafted. Uh, none of these guys are 2004, right? I don't know that. Uh, Dyson Daniels mentioned him, the G League. We got Nikola Jovic. Oh my God. He has a chance to go in the top 15. He could just be not Luka Doncic, but just somebody that could play make and just coming over with a similar style of play. Oh, I'm so excited to watch some Nikola Jovic this year. Benedict Mather and a sophomore out of Arizona, or excuse me, Arizona. Kendall Brown mentioned him before. J.D. Davison also mentioned him going to Atlanta. Um, and then does he have you at 21 through 30? We got Max Christie, Michigan State. I mentioned the Michigan State player before. Michael Brackenchin, who was supposed to be in this year's draft, but then uh, withdrew his name. Hopefully it'll be a lock-in first round pick next year, as he should. Jabari Walker, Tati Washington, Nolan Hickman, who will get some... Um, just big games at Gonzaga. I don't think he's going to come over after year one. I don't know. He just seems like a sophomore guy. To be in the draft, there's Manny Zhang. Uh, going to be playing for the Breakers like uh, RJ and uh, Lamelo did. Matthew Mayer from Baylor. They're going to be good this year as well in the Big 12. Uh, once again, Michael Foster. Wait, Foster? Is in the, I didn't know he was in this class. Oh, no, he was. Yeah, yeah, no, I did. I'm thinking of somebody else. Julian Champagne from St. John's. Mark Williams from Duke. Okay, a lot of names that I mentioned. I actually didn't have, I think, Matthew Cleveland in my mock. I don't know why, but I think I was reading that. I don't know, but I guess he will be in the draft. So maybe that's just a mistake on me. I'll probably have to put that in the comments whenever that video goes live. But yeah, that is going to be for me. I hope you guys did enjoy. Drop a like if you did. Uh, I'm very excited about this year's draft class. It is going to be, I think, better than 2021. It's just loaded with talent. Like, and we're going to see so many different, like, we're going to see four different leagues of talent. We're going to see the NCAA this year, which at home ground and a lot of these top guys, Ben Shiro. And like uh, Jalen Duran, A.J. Griffin. We're going to see some international games like Yannick Zosa. We're going to see Nikola Jovic. Uh, and then who's the other guy? We're going to see um, Rocco Pragachin. Like we're going to see a bunch of guys overseas as well. I don't know. I knew Smeni Zhang. Um, I knew there was one more. We're going to see the Overtime League. 
with um, uh, G. Montero this year. And then we're going to see the G League Unite with Michael Foster, Dyson Daniels, and Jaden Hardy. Like, four different leagues we have to keep our eyes on for first-round picks next year. And, like, that's just counting international as a league when you really have your, like, New Zealand league, your Spanish league, your Lithuanian, Serbian, like, all different types. So it's going to be a loaded basketball season. I'm very excited. We're becoming, like, a worldwide global sport if it wasn't already. But it's just even more talent this year, and you're seeing so many different leagues. Like, there's enough talent where, like, there's going to be – first round draft picks in the overtime week in an overtime week like it's crazy but yeah that's great for me thank you all for watching i love you guys and i'll catch you on the next one peace